The Georgia criminal investigation into Donald Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election picking up some speed. All 16 of the, quote, fake electors, part of the plan to replace Joe Biden's legitimate electors with Trump electors, were told today that they are now a part of the criminal probe. Joining me now, Stacey Abrams, a Democratic candidate for Georgia governor. Thank you, Stacey Abrams, for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. This alleged plot to overturn the election in Georgia, it seems to be keep getting bigger and closer to the former president. I mean, it, never a dull moment when it comes to Georgia politics. You guys seem to always be in the spotlight. Why is it so significant that this is going down in your state? Because this is a state that unfortunately has a very long and recent history of voter suppression and of voter intimidation and challenges in our system. I know that one of the people on that list is the Republican nominee for lieutenant governor, and that our current governor has said he is proud to have him as a running mate. Uh, he is proof of the fact that in Georgia, whether you're the governor who just happened not to commit treason or the lieutenant governor who may have participated in a seditious act, that either of them are poor representations of what democracy should be in the state of Georgia or in the United States. So you mentioned the, the governor, you, you'll be running against him, the, the, the president. I want to talk about that in the context of the, the current president, Biden's approval ratings are the lowest that they have ever been. Only 38 percent of people approve of the job that he's doing. I mean, it, look, parties in power already usually lose the next election, as you're aware of. But these numbers don't look good, Stacey. If voters aren't happy with the head of the party, I mean, that'll have an impact on Democrats in races across the country, including you in your governor's race. We understand that the national challenges are real, that the impact of inflation, that the rising cost are absolutely devastating to families. But we also know that the governor has the ability to do something about it. And unfortunately, this governor has refused to act. He is sitting on more than $547 million. that could help families stay in their homes. And instead, they're facing evictions at a record rate. He could do something about the issue of gun violence, and yet he weakened gun laws to put more weapons in the hands of criminals and dangerous people. He could address the needs of women by expanding access to health care. And instead of expanding Medicaid, which would lower costs not only for low-income families, but lower costs across the board, he has signed into law the most extreme and dangerous abortion law in the state's history, making it dangerous for women to even contemplate getting pregnant. He has made it harder to be a Georgian, harder to survive here. And while the national headwinds may be real, we know that the pain and the trauma and the danger in Georgia, if Brian Kemp remains governor, is also real. Yeah, but the question was about Biden, though, and whether Biden impacts you and your race. And my point is this, that while we live in a nation where the president is doing his best to confront economic challenges that are happening around the world, we have a governor who has the very real tools in his hand provided by Democrats to actually stave off these challenges. He has the ability to take millions of dollars provided to the state by President Biden, by Senator Raphael Warnock and Senator John Ossoff. And instead, he is refusing to deploy those resources. He's refusing to expand Medicaid. He's refusing to acknowledge the housing crisis. And so it's very important that we recognize that the governor's races matter because governors have the ability to respond locally and directly to the needs of the people. And Brian Kemp is refusing to do that job, either because he doesn't care or because he's unwilling to do his job. But doesn't it seem to be helping him in Georgia? I mean, maybe that's where Georgians are. I'm just wondering, because otherwise he wouldn't be doing it if he didn't think it was beneficial. And the polls are showing that he's doing OK. The polls have us in a pretty dead heat. And the reality is I've been traveling the state. I just got back from visiting Bacon and Albany and Tifton, Georgia. And in every single place, I hear from families who are in pain. They wonder why the governor won't step up and help them with their housing crisis. They want to know why he won't expand Medicaid when health care costs are real, when part of what's happening with inflation is that the cost of everything is going up. And when you have to decide between putting food on your table or putting medicine in your body, that is the wrong choice to have to make. And Georgians are being forced to make those choices despite having the resources. Georgia has the ability, the governor has the ability to solve these problems, and he's refusing to. But he's counting on people only paying attention to what he's done. He's refusing to offer a single sense of what he will do to tackle these crises. And that is why I'm going to win the race for governor. You have, um, you know, you've got a key Senate race happening down there. 
what would that, what would it mean to Georgia and the country to have a Senator Herschel Walker instead of a Senator Raphael Warnock? It, we begin by having a senator who has misled the public, misled his party, and misled the people of Georgia, as opposed to Senator Warnock, who has done everything he can to serve our communities. He brought the resources to the state that Brian Kemp is currently taking credit for and advantage of. He has been a champion for lowering cost, whether it's prescription drugs or making sure that we have gas prices that are lower. I stand in lockstep with Senator Raphael Warnock because together we believe that we can serve Georgia. Let's be clear, Don, you can either have trickle-down economics or an economic policy that lifts all boats. And unfortunately, whether it's Herschel Walker or Brian Kemp, they only serve those who benefit themselves. They have no interest in and have no proven engagement with communities that need their help, including a middle class that is struggling just as hard to stay where they are. Raphael Warnock is doing that work. I as an independent and private citizen, have been doing that work. But unfortunately, the Republican ticket has no interest in doing the work for the people of Georgia. A similar question as I asked you uh, before. I mean, Herschel Walker is, despite all of the missteps, despite all of the, uh, you know, lies that he, have been, he has been caught in, uh, the fact checks that, that prove it, he's never worked in law enforcement and so on and so forth, he is still doing okay in the polls. What does that say about where Georgians are in this moment that someone like um, Herschel Walker can still be doing well despite every, all of the headwinds or everything, all of the, the controversy that he has created. Georgia is a divided state. We are purple for a reason. We're half Democratic, half Republican. My race in 2018, it was a difference of 1.4%. Uh, the victory that Raphael Warnock had a year and a half later, or sorry, four years later, that victory was 100,000 votes. This is a very narrow margin state. And because of that, every vote counts. And that goes back to the original point. We have to have leaders who believe in democracy and believe in every voter has the right to be heard. Brian Kemp does not believe that. Prior to his one day of grace, the fact that he's getting credit for not committing treason, he built a reputation as someone who not only spawned and invested in voter suppression, he celebrated it. He actually said during his Republican primary that he passed SB 202 because he didn't like the results of the federal election in 2020 and 2021. We win these elections when people know who we're running against. And because the state is divided, every vote is going to count. And Raphael Warnock and I are going to work hard up and down the ticket to make certain we turn up every single voter to make sure that we have a Georgia we can move forward. Stacey Abrams, thanks for appearing. Thank you for having me.